Chelsea, you're a professional photographer. Do you think people should still get a camera or are the smartphones good enough now? If you had asked me that like a few months ago, I maybe would have told people they could probably do enough with their smartphone. But mm -hmm. after I ruined our vacation pictures by only bringing my phone, I am even more passionate about believing everyone should have a camera if they're interested in photos. And we're not only going to tell you the reasons, but we're gonna show you and demonstrate it with side-by-side -side pictures. We're gonna leave the studio and test some things so we can demonstrate why you probably want a camera. People see us test expensive cameras, but cameras don't have to be expensive. You can get used cameras that produce professional results for literally $300. That's camera and lens by going to this link at KEH. KEH sells used gear and they do so with a 21 day return period and 180 day warranty. That means there's no risk to you. You can't be scammed. And if you aren't happy with it, you just send it back. Yeah, and that's why we chose KEH, because everyone thinks of photography as a really expensive hobby, but you can get great deals on used gear, and we're so thankful that KEH makes that possible. So thanks, KEH. All right, let's show people some of the reasons. One of my favorite things about taking pictures with my real camera is the ergonomics, and by that I just mean they're so much easier to hold. And often when I'm taking pictures with my phone, I'm holding it up like this and trying to hit these little buttons and worrying about dropping it in a storm drain. A lot of cameras like this Canon RP has a tilt screen. So if you're shooting down low or up high, which I end up doing because I'm pretty short, you can flip the screen and see what you're taking a picture of. Now this particular camera used was about $600 at KEH, so that's a pretty decent price for the results you're about to see. Okay, my dogs are always around and ready for a photo shoot. Now, I do like to just get at my subject's level, which you can just kneel down and take a picture. But often when I'm outside, especially when I'm traveling, the ground is dirty, I don't wanna get on my knees, and that's when this tilt screen is really nice and you can hold your camera down low and see what you're taking a picture with while shooting down low. She doesn't look very enthusiastic. <laughs> Why is she pausing better for the phone? You little video sabotager. Cameras are also just designed to be in your hand. Look at this grip, it's comfortable to hold. The buttons fall right under my fingers and my thumb. And so it's just an easier experience when you're taking photos. It's also designed to adjust settings really quickly with these dials and buttons instead of having to go onto your screen or find where your settings are. Kit, you know what else I really like about my real camera is that it keeps me in the moment. So often when I'm taking pictures, a notification pops up on my phone. I've got an email or I've got a text or someone's trying to talk to me on social media. And how can you really get absorbed into a scene when that's happening? I know that when I have my camera around my neck and I'm looking through the viewfinder, I'm really soaking up the moment, focusing on my composition, feeling that joy you feel when you catch that scene with beautiful light and there's no notifications popping up kit. Because you could get a notification that says, dog bone, puppy treat, and that would be very distracting. Another thing that I love about my real camera is the way that it looks and not just because it's like aesthetically pleasing, which it is. It's so beautiful. You can get a camera that suits your style, but also because when I carry it around, people take me more seriously as a photographer, especially if you're out and about in public and you go to take a picture, people tend to move out of your way, try not to get in your shot because they know that you're doing more than just taking a touristy snapshot with your phone they know that you care about the final image much more. So looks matter. Where you're going to see the biggest difference is with sports and wildlife setups like this. This is actually about what a iPhone costs. It's the Canon uh, RP and the Canon 800 millimeter F11, and you can get it for about $1,300 at KEH. Now, this is the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and it's got that new telephoto lens that they're boasting about. The thing that people don't think about is that this is not going to be as good as this because of physics. And let me show you the difference. I can zoom in all the way on my subject, but when you go to crop, even sharing it online, you can see that the subject isn't very sharp. It's not very clear. And that's when you're gonna be the most happy to have a real camera. The difference between smartphones and cameras used to be all about image quality and smartphones couldn't produce decent quality images. It's gotten so much better. But one place where smartphones still kind of suck is with skin tones. I hate the way portraits look. It looks, uh, uh, I'll just show you. I'll take a picture with both cameras. And you can see the iPhone is kind of trying too hard. It makes your skin 
waxy and uh, kind of artificial looking because it is because it's like an AI enhanced version of a human, whereas the traditional camera takes pictures of a real human. And that's all done with just the kit lens. If you want really cool results, KEH has a ton of vintage lenses, and I absolutely love these. Check out this old Nikon 50 millimeter lens that I can connect to any modern mirrorless camera with an adapter, and this will give an amazing effect. Just watch. Now, this is a manual focus lens, but that's no problem at all with modern mirrorless cameras. Let's, uh, let's get this Christmas tree in there, get these lights bokeh-ing. On a traditional camera, a prime lens with a low f-stop number gets the eyes sharp, but casts everything else a little out of focus, like the tip of her nose is blurred so you don't see all the pores that you do see on the iPhone. The iPhone tries to fake the out of focus background, but you can see the bokeh balls are small. And if you look at the transitions between her face and her hair and the tree behind her, it gets weird. Vintage lenses can have really cool bokeh, like this lens shows soap bubble bokeh with hard edges that have a cat's eye shape. You don't have to understand this stuff to look at these pictures and see the iPhone picture looks flat and lifeless and the vintage lens picture looks real and 3D. With the vintage lens, I was able to control the aperture and get really cool bokeh. Cameras give you control over those camera settings that the iPhone just chooses for you. Cameras also give you the ability to control the light by adding a flash. I'll have to show you what a big difference that can make in a backlit situation like this. I have so much creative control that I could add just a little bit of fill flash, or I could raise the shutter speed, overpower the sun, and make the picture look like it was night. With the iPhone, well, it has a built-in flash, but look at what you get even with the flash on. The flash isn't powerful enough to light up her face, and it certainly isn't powerful enough to overpower the sun. The iPhone's processing did a pretty good job of bringing up the exposure on Chelsea's face, which would have been underexposed. But look how unnatural the backlighting on her hair looks, because the iPhone tried to recover those highlights, whereas the Sony camera here showed the highlights naturally, and this looks more realistic, it looks more 3D. The Sony with a good lens is also able to blur the background out, something the iPhone really can't do. And if you zoom in, that is not close. You can kind of see the effect of the flash from the iPhone, but the flash just wasn't bright enough, whereas the flash is distinct in her eye here. And look how many creative options a camera and flash gave me without moving. I could turn the flash up and make the background completely dark, or I could balance them carefully for a natural look. I could give her the flash kind of paparazzi look or anything in between. With the iPhone, you get one look and it kind of sucks. But this flash can do a lot more. So let's go inside and I'll show you what you can do when you bounce the flash. In low light conditions like this, the flash can make all the difference, but not on your smartphone, right? Like I'll take a pic picture of Chelsea with the flash here. You get what you get, you have no control over it. But with an on-camera flash like this, I have total control. It does not have to be a direct flash. I can bend the flash head around and bounce it off of these walls and make it look like professional without having to drag out any big lights. To get any effect from the iPhone's flash, I had to move close to Chelsea, and then the flash is so direct that it removes all the detail and shape from her face. The catch light in her eyes is ugly, but being able to bounce the flash gives me so much more flexibility when shooting indoors. And you can see, because the flash is coming from an angle, it is leaving shadows on her face, defining the shape of her face. The catch light in her eyes is attractive but natural. There's just no comparison. That's just with on-camera flash. You can very easily and inexpensively move the flash off-camera and like look at these crazy creative shots we've gotten with inexpensive strobes that you can get from KEH in a studio environment. And that's the great thing about a conventional, traditional camera is it unleashes your creativity. It allows you to do more than just what a smartphone could capture. I don't care what you say, Chelsea, I'm not getting rid of my smartphone. I never asked you to get rid of your smartphone. I'm not getting rid of mine either. Of course, there are practical times when you want a little discreet camera that's just good enough. But I think by seeing the results you're gonna see, 
you want a real camera and thankfully KEH makes that possible. We have links down below where you can save 5% on anything you get there. You can get cool vintage lenses, you can get compact cameras, you could get an older, bigger professional DSLR, all for low prices. So thanks KEH for making that possible and thanks to all of you for watching. I also wanna encourage you to think of a camera as an investment in your future memories because you will look back on this time in your life and you're gonna look at your smartphone pictures and think, oh God, why are they so bad? <laughs> Get yourself a camera as a present to your future self, to your children and your grandchildren who will look upon this time of your life and want a little bit better quality than modern smartphones can handle. It's an investment that will pay off. I would add to that that while you're at it and appreciating your photos, remember to print them or to put them in a digital frame. It's so nice when you have high quality pictures and you can make a photo book for someone or for yourself, so. That's my tip.